Hello, good afternoon. I want to talk about something everybody needs to consider. When I used to teach, and I would teach a story in a certain time period, I would always teach them about how it was to live during those times, what a day entailed to live, to survive, during the time that the, to that the period of peace was written. Um, that, you know, they were probably writing by candlelight. Your day ended when the sun went down. Um, you would constantly have to cut wood and stoke fires. You would have to go and gather water. You would have to wash your clothes by hand. Most people, if the, you know, took a shower once every couple of weeks if they were fortunate enough, um, had a way to boil water and carry it and pour it in a large tub, um, medicine, um, non-existent to what we know today. Um, I would try and get them to understand, um, to get a full picture of the author and, um, their background and um, any information that was available to try and give them perspective because a lot of these people read some of these novels and things and they want to judge it from 2021 standards, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. How are you going to know the truths? How are you going to know the mistakes? How are you going to know anything if you cannot read. I mean, you don't have to agree with what they're saying. You don't have to agree with the novel and the way they behave. You don't have to agree with the way they treat certain people. That's not the point. The point is, is that you read the novel and you see how it was and how it shouldn't be or how it was and how it should be. And you try and learn different aspects of people's character. And see the truth, their truth at the time. And that's the beauty of literature and um, being able to see the differences in a hundred years, two hundred years ago, three hundred years ago, thousand years ago. And in this world, in a lot of places, we have gotten very comfortable. And what a lot of us don't realize and really understand is that we're here because people in our history, our ancestors, made certain decisions during certain times, probably to ensure that we'd be here, their lineage would be here in existence. Some sacrificed their lives to make sure that their children would be here and their grandchildren would be here. Or if not their own children, maybe their nieces and nephews would be here. There was a lot of sacrifices made in history by our ancestors throughout time. Now, I'm not saying they were all great people. I'm not saying that at all. But there were ones there were moments in time that ensured that we would be here today. There were hard decisions to be made. There were things we probably can't even imagine. But understand that their blood is running through our veins. And it's now our turn to ensure that there's a future for the children of this world. And I hope we aren't too soft. I hope we haven't become too soft. I really do. I have one ancestor. Um, my fourth great-grandfather on my mother's side. Who fought in a slave revolt. And... Um, he was one of the leaders, and he died 
but it made a difference. And all those families that exist today because he was willing to do the right thing and his sons and his wife and his daughter-in-laws also fought the fight. I'm sure there are many more in your ancestors. We've uh, had it fairly easy all along. But to see people just acquiesce and not do their own research when they have all the information that they could actually read, if they actually took the time to do it, just to follow along and not make sure that what you're being told is the truth. Having faith <laughs> in uh, people who you don't even know thinking that they have your best interest at heart when what they're trying to have you do benefits them greatly. It's hard to understand that people don't think like you do. They don't um, have compassion like you do. They don't um, they think nothing of uh, the loss of people. You know, their their lives are on paper and it comes down to manipulated data to justify their behavior. We don't have a lot to do right now except say no. We don't have to wield a sword or go off and trek for 20 miles in the wilderness and through treacherous conditions. Uh, we don't have to do any of those things. All we have to do is just say no right now. And uh, some people can't even do that. Well, I hope that uh, since their focus is now on the children, some people might snap out of it. And I see some of that a little bit. <clears throat> you need to pray every day and ask for strength. If you can't sit inside of a restaurant, don't sit inside of the restaurant. It's not the end of the world. If you can't go into the store, don't go into that store. Work your way around it, whatever you need to do. What you do now is going to make a huge difference. It's extremely important. You have to gather strength. And again, just like in my last video, remember, this is not a popularity contest and you need to be your best friend and you need to hang on to your faith like you've never hung on to it before because it's now our turn. Y'all have a nice day. Bye for now.